All right, hey, what's up guys? It's Roy here. And with today's video, we're gonna be touching on beta two Android 12. So I did a video on beta one uh, when that came out, so you can follow the card up above for that. But with beta two, this video is gonna be basically all the new changes and differences of beta two versus beta one. And I can tell you right now, guys, beta two blows beta one out of the water. It's just a lot cleaner. Uh, a little more uh, rich with uh, features versus beta one. Um, so we're gonna touch on all those. Uh, if I do miss one thing, guys, do let me know down in the comments because I have been trying to really go in depth on uh, my usage of this as I've upgraded to it uh, two days ago. Um, but like I said, if I do miss something, let me know down in the comments. So first thing I'm gonna touch on is the actual lock screen. So now with the always on display here, as you can see, you have the larger clock, which was the same in beta one, so that's not any different. But when you unlock the device and get to the actual lock screen, as you can see here, it gets a little bolder, which it did in beta one, but now you have the uh, lock icon here. Uh, and then when you do unlock it, you can see that it unlocks. But you also have this added bonus of this uh, little um, icon here and it is like a little wallet with like cards sticking out and that's for Google Pay, but it's like a little quick access for it. So if you click it, it's gonna open up Google Pay and whatever card that you have is your like main one, boom, you're good to go. And then if you do like face unlock or you do unlock to pay, it's gonna unlock the device and now it's gonna say hold a reader and you're good to go. Um, so that is a nice added bonus there, having that quick access there for Google Pay. Another thing that you might have noticed right there is when I unlock the device, you have this animation there. So it's very similar to the animation of like whenever you're um, charging the device. So for example, if I was to plug it in here, then you can see that animation. So every time that you plug in the device, the animation goes across the screen. But now you do have that whenever you do unlock the device. So as you can see there, you have that. So that is an added bonus now with Android uh, 12 beta two versus beta one. Uh, and another thing too, is you do get that haptic kind of feedback whenever that ripple effect does go on. So whenever it does that, my phone does vibrate. Now obviously you can turn that uh, haptic uh, response off, but I kind of like it because it just reminds me that the phone's about to be unlocked. And then of course I would just swipe up. So there we go. Another new thing is basically the refinement of everything as far as the quick panels go. So as you can see here, uh, it just looks a lot cleaner uh, versus beta one. So now you have just a little bit cleaner look with these uh, new chunky uh, little uh, icon quick panels here. Um, an added bonus with Google Pay there. So now you have your wallet there that you can just click and boom, you're good to go. Um, but as you can see here, it just looks a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. Uh, the brightness bar here uh, definitely uh, looks a lot better in beta two versus beta one. Um, so as you can see there, it's, it's still got this bold um, presence because that's what Android 12 is all about with this stuff, but it is just looking a lot cleaner. And then also that goes to the same with the volume up and down. So whenever you do your volume up and down here, you have a newer look here. So as you can see here, it looks way better in beta two versus beta one. Beta one, it looked really ugly. It looked like just a, you know, just a big Sharpie or something you just used. So it just did not look refined at all, did not look clean like it does here. And then of course you do have uh, the ability to do that there. And then if you click that here, now you get the access um, that pops up there to do ring, silent, or uh, vibrate. And then of course, live caption is on there as well as an option. So overall, like I said, just the refinement, the cleaner look, whenever you go down into your settings here, you can see it just looks a lot cleaner now as well. It's not a really light gray like beta one was. Uh, it's a little bit darker. Um, so it gives me more of that look of a dark theme, uh, which I prefer the darker look. Uh, the icons are a lot more vibrant in beta two versus beta one. So all in all, it just looks cleaner, looks better for sure in beta two. The other thing is pointing out every time that you open an app, uh, as you can see here, uh, let's say if I open YouTube, you can see that it gives you the icon first 
and then it unlocks the app. So let's do Spotify. So same thing, boom, opens it up, does that. YouTube Studio, same thing. Uh, Instagram, same thing. So every time that you open an app now, it's doing that. I don't know if they're gonna keep that in the final version, um, but as of beta two, it did not do that in beta one, but in beta two, it is doing that every time I open an app. Another thing to point out is whenever you are going to swipe these away, watch this one over here. See that glitch right there? It's not a glitch, it just bounces. That is something new with beta two as well. I don't know if that's on purpose or if that's just a glitch, but every time that that um, is a, like a, the swipe away feature, the one that's to the left kind of does a little bounce every time that you are going to swipe them away. So it's just something I noticed. So I wanted to point it out in the video. The next thing and one of the big things that a lot of people care about is if you saw it when I was showing you here, um, now you have the access for mic access and camera access to be turned off or turned on. So now you have the ability to completely turn off your mic access and block any app from using your mic. Then you can turn it right back on. Same thing with the camera. As you can see here, it says blocked and you can turn it back on. Now that is going to go for any app. So if you turn it off, you turn it off. So you're not able to access. So if I turned off the camera right there and blocked it, and then I went to the camera, as you can see here, it says unlock device camera. This unblocks access for all apps and services allowed to use your camera. So as you can see here, I have to unblock it to be able to let me use it. And then the first thing that you notice is this really large green pill shaped thing that was up there. And now you can see it's a dot. So that is gonna be on every time that the camera or the microphone is being accessed from any app. So now that I'm using the video camera, you can see here, you got this green dot. If you swipe down, now it gets bigger and it's a little video camera in there. You can click it and it's gonna tell you that the uh, camera is being used by the camera. And I can click that, and now I can go down here and actually change the permissions to allow the camera to use it or not to use it if I wanted to. Now obviously I did unblock it, but it's giving you that access to know, hey, there is an app that's using your camera or your mic, definitely keep that in mind. Um, another thing that it'll do, like for example, like if I was to, I don't know, just randomly, let's say, text some fake number here. And then I go to text, and then I do, for example, like the uh, voice text. As I'm doing it, as you can see here, now it gives you that same green pill but it's a green pill with the mic icon. And now it turns to that small green dot and I can scroll down, click it. And now it's saying that the mic is being used by Gboard. So like I said, anytime you're accessing any of these features, uh, you are going to notice that green dot up there. Now the dot and the color does not change. It's always gonna be green. I wish it maybe would change like yellow for mic and green for camera so you know which one's which. But at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. It's just letting you know something's accessing it. Do you want it to use it or not to use it? Another thing to point out is whenever you go to your internet or your networks, you can click it there. And now you have this look where it's a lot different um, versus how it used to be. So now you have it down here at the bottom with the rounded corners and all that, just that new different look. But it's supposed to be able to help you with more one-handed operation style. Uh, so it is welcomed in my opinion. I prefer things lower than up high. Even though the Pixel 4 is a small device, it's still hard sometimes to swipe up with your thumb to the very top if you needed to for whatever reason or to access something up here. So I do like that it gives you this feature here. So the next thing to point out that's a little bit different is in the Play Store. So if I go to Play Store here, the look looks like it did originally with beta one. So nothing's really changed here, but what has changed is um, accessing the manage apps and device tab here. So if I go to that, now you have this different screen here versus how it looks on other devices. So let's say for example, 
with my S21 here, if I go to the Play Store and do the same thing, and go to My Apps, as you can see here, it gives you this list here and it shows you which apps need to be update or pending, recently updated. Instead here, it shows you on this side here where I can go to see recent updates and it's gonna show me like this list here, updates available, which there are none, but if there were, it would actually show you right there where uh, this portion is here and then you can actually click it and click which ones you wanna update and all that but that is just something random that I've noticed uh, with beta two. So one of the big things that's new with beta two is getting a little bit closer to the material you of having your uh, overall look of the device change when you have different color wallpapers. Now, obviously this is beta, so it is very, um, I wouldn't say glitchy, but it doesn't work as well as I would like. Because for example, like right now I have a blue black um, wallpaper on my device. And as you can see here, whenever I swipe down, it might be hard to tell in the video, but it's kind of like this like faint blue, um, almost like an off white looking color with these things here. Even when I do this here, uh, same thing, obviously. So, right, the, the colors are there. They're all, those are the main things that are gonna change. Um, but let's say, for example, if I went in and changed the wallpaper to, I don't know, just something like dark, for example. Like, let's just say we go just black, right? Like we do this one here, I click yes, and boom, we're good to go. And I do it for the home screen and lock screen. Now, as you can see there, it went with like a yellowish color. And I guess it's just trying to pull it from like some accents that were in the uh, live animation wallpaper in here. But I would have assumed it would have went with something a little bit darker um, because it's supposed to give you that overall feel of like, hey, it's gonna just kind of be a seamless look with your wallpaper. And it just unfortunately does not do it with certain color wallpapers. Um, now, for example, let's say I go back in and let's do like, um, let's do this one, right? So we'll just do this one for all of it and we'll see what color it pops up. So now, see, so this is like a more of like a, you know, white and black and, you know, just a kind of a darker, um, I don't know. I really like this wallpaper, just mainly just how it pops sometimes with the, um, you know, uh, Google update stuff up here with my time and all that. But whenever I do it, as you can see now, it changes the colors to like this light, I don't know, like, um, like it's, and then they're all like pastel colors. That's another thing to point out. They're not just like these vibrant colors. I think eventually with Material U, you're gonna be able to change if you want it to be more pastel or really vibrant and bright. But as you can see here, it just looks a little different. Um, and then like, for example, I, I think I did like Zedge and I went in here and you know, I just, I'll pick some random wallpaper color. So let's say like this really bright blue, right? So let's just set it for both. Boom, we're good to go. That's another thing, as you can see, I'm trying to clean it up. Boom, there it goes. So now it's like this really bright blue, but it never changed the color here. So immediately that's a red flag for me during beta is that it does not change the color here, um, but it will change it over here. So this color is more of like a whitish bluish, but this color here is more of like the pinkish pastel color. So there is some glitches there with it. Like I said, it's not the end of the world, but it is what it is. I need to point it out. If I do go into the wallpaper styles and stuff and you go to styling, so usually whenever you do this portion here, you're able to, you know, obviously change the icons shapes and it'll change the colors of like the notification uh, or the quick panel stuff. But one thing that I wanna point out is like for my custom one here, I did like this bluish color, right? And, but kept everything pretty much the same. So let's say I go ahead and move forward with that one. So it changes the color here. So as you can see there, now it's like this really bright bluish green aqua color but when I go to here, it doesn't change there. So that is something also to point out because I do know for a fact in beta one, 
if I change the color in general, it changed the color for all of it. And that's the same for Android 11 as well. If I change the color, it changed the color for everything. So here it's not changing the color for these um, little quick panel um, access things here. It's only doing it whenever you do your volume up and down and that's pretty much it. So that is something else to point out. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna touch on is kind of the ability to change the accuracy of the um, GPS locating your exact position. So you can actually change it now to give you the ability to give the phone your precise location or the general area of your location. So for example, if I went down like into the settings here and then went to uh, location, and let's just say I click Google Maps because that's the main thing I would use it for. So here, obviously, I have the different um, changes that I can make. So these are normal things like allow all the time access, allow it while I'm only using the app, or I can uh, you know, have it uh, access every time or don't allow it all. But as you can see here, now it says use precise location. So it says when precise location is off, apps can access your approximate location. So this is something new with beta two is now that, you know, obviously there's certain apps where you might not want an app to know exactly where you're at, but obviously with GPS, you want to know where, you know, if you're using Google maps or something while you're driving, you want it to know exactly where you're at. But let's say you're using Facebook and you don't want it to know you're at, I don't know, some bar or something like that, but it just gives you the general area then that's what it's going to do and that's the only access that it's going to give so that is pretty cool it's really big on privacy which usually the word privacy and google are not synonymous um, but they are trying to get better with it and that's the cool thing about it is you can tell for sure with beta 2 is those things are starting to come to fruition um, there's not a ton of glitches that i've noticed but there have been some where the lock screen kind of freezes so whenever I'm like staring at it, it shows it's unlocked, but then when I'm swiping, it just kind of does this, which I'm not looking at the phone right now, but that is something that I've noticed. Another thing that I've noticed is, is, is it makes it harder sometimes to try to actually get access to put in your code versus using face unlock. So let's say if face, lock, face unlock wasn't available, usually if you did it like this, obviously it's searching for my face right now, but it's not giving me the ability to say, hey, I don't see your face, but put in your code. But if I click the lock button there, then it does it. But usually if you're swiping up, since I have the swipe up um, ability on, once my face unlocks the actual device, um, that is just something to kind of point out uh, with that glitch a little bit. Like I said, it's not a huge glitch, but right there, as you can see, like it barely caught my face and it finally worked, but I can just click that and it will go to here. And these buttons just look a little bit cleaner. And these also change colors uh, to match everything else, like the volume up and down stuff and all that. Um, so that's a glitch I have also noticed, like I said, just sometimes when I'm trying to uh, you know, swipe out of an app. So let me go ahead and get in. Um, and let's just say like I do that and then I'm trying to close it. Uh, sometimes it will take forever to get to that part right there. Uh, obviously in this video it didn't, but there has been some times where it just kind of gets stuck uh, and then I have to turn the phone off, turn it back on just real quick, not like completely powered off and it works. So not a whole lot to complain about it. I am looking forward to some of the things um, getting fixed, uh, like the ability to actually change the color to the color I want for everything and all that stuff. Um, the widgets and everything look the same as far as, you know, obviously you have the list of widgets like you did with beta two or with beta one. Uh, so with that being said, no big change there. So there you have it guys. Hit that like button if you liked the video. If you loved it, please subscribe and ring that notification bell for up to date content. Um, but once beta three comes out, you know I'll be doing this video again. So until next time guys, be safe out there and God bless.